So we're going to talk about within subjects divines in a factorial design. This is often referred to as a cross design. And the reason for the term cross divine is that each level of a factor is exposed to each level of every other factor. So this is basically a full within subjects design using a factorial ANOVA, two by two design again. So we're staying at the most basic level. We have two independent variables and each one has two levels. But across of that, we're also looking at the same people in every possible combination of those two IVs. So in a between subject design, for example, we might look at males versus females and then look at their scores, uh, whether they're homosexual, bisexual, or heterosexual. So if you're a male bisexual, N of 10, those are 10 unique people that are not exposed to any other condition. So we're looking at the differences between subjects. So how do people differ in their score on the outcome based on their basically membership of the two IVs? Uh, within subject design, again, we're going to have two variables. We're going to have, for example, this time a pretest and a post test. That's variable one. You could also consider this variable a time variable, time one versus time two. And then a second time variable, fifth grade versus sixth grade versus seventh grade. So in this case, we have a set of data where we're basically giving people a pretest at the start of fifth grade, a pretest, a post test at the end of fifth grade, a pretest at the start of sixth grade, a post test at the end of sixth grade, and a pretest of seventh grade and a post test at the seventh grade. Notice our ends are the same: 20, 20, 20, 20, and 20. And also, every time that end is the same people. So they're the exact same people were pretested in the fifth grade. Two years later, at the end of the seventh grade, those same people were, were tested again. So this would be a cross design. Each level of a factor is exposed to each level of every other factor. It's the same people. Now, beyond that, we're effectively looking at the same statistical technique. We're still looking at a factorial ANOVA. Now, we are going to be using a different mathematical um, equation in the background because, again, we basically are no longer having to estimate the error of differences between people. It's the same people. The biggest thing, though, to wrap your head around is how we actually construct these variables in SPSS, and that's what I really want to focus on for this first of three lectures, is actually talking and walking through the SPSS, and you'll also be doing this in the lab portion as well, but it's different enough because up until now, any time that we were needing variables in SPSS, we created them in column in SPSS before we ever went to the statistical package. In the case of a within subjects or cross design, we're actually going to be creating variables in the statistical analysis. So looking at a two by two repeated measures ANOVA. So this is two variables with each one with two levels. However, that basically creates a cross design. We have four total conditions, but the same people are in each of those conditions. So for example, in this case, we're going to be looking at an independent variable, extroversion, and an independent variable, gender. However, in this case, what we're doing is actually we're looking at the ratings people gave someone that they watched on a video. So participants watched four videos. They watched a video with a male who was extroverted. They watched a video with a female that was extroverted. They watched a video that was a male that was introverted and a video that was a female introverted. And this is actually real world data from a study I did quite a few years ago, looking at basically how personality, extroversion, and gender interacted with each other and how people rated an application for a job position. So all four of these conditions, the information that was given by the participant in the video was the same. They all gave the same job relevant information. However, they either were expressing it very extroverted, so a lot of eye contact and a lot of excitement, or very introverted, not a lot of eye contact and kind of subdued. And again, we varied the actor, whether they were male or female. At the end of each condition, they rated whether or not they would hire this person on a one to five scale, and that's the data we're looking at. So the DV is their rating of the applicant. Now again, in this case, we have a column of data for each combination. We have the ratings of the male extroverts, the ratings of the female extroverts, the rating of the male introverts, and the rating of the female introverts. That's the columns we have in SPSS. Gender in this case is actually the gender of the applicant, not the IV of gender.
so again, if we're looking at simply the difference between male and female extroverts, we're looking at these two columns. If we're looking at the difference between male or female introverts, we're looking at these two columns. But we need to communicate to SPSS what exactly we're interested in because our, inter our first IV is extroversion. So extroversion in that case is the combination of both male and female extroverts. And introverts are the combination of male and female introverts. So that's our first IV. That, it doesn't actually exist as a separate IV or a column in our data set. If we're looking at gender, I need to combine male extroverts and male introverts into a single score, and female introverts and female extroverts into a single score. And finally, there's the interaction. So again, in previous statistical techniques, what we've done is created new columns. We don't have to do that in this case. We're going to actually create those columns, not as a separate function, but basically create them as a function of actually running the analysis. And again, if we're looking at males, I need to combine these two. And if I'm looking at females, I need to combine these two. So again, we're not going to adjust our data set. We're not going to create new columns. We're going to go to general linear model repeated measures. So this is where we're going to run a two by two repeated measures design. Once there, we actually have to inform SPSS what our actual measures are. So we have to define our repeated measures. So in this case, we need extroversion versus introversion and male versus female. So we're actually going to write introversion versus or extra intro in that first open box and number of levels two and hit add. We're then going to add male and female and two and add. And then finally, we're going to actually define what the IV or DV is, in this case, desirability. Now again, in the past, anytime we've done an analysis, there has been a separate column all by itself, which has been our DV. Our DV is now intertwined in our IV, so we need to define it in this phase as well. So under measure name, we would measure what we actually have as an IV, and again, we'd hit add. So we're gonna label our first IV, we're gonna indicate how many levels it has, we're gonna hit add. We're going to repeat with our second IV, and if we had a more complex design or more levels, we would then just make those adjustments. Finally, we're going to name the DV, and we're going to hit Add, at which point we're going to click Define. So at this point, what we're actually going to see is our within subjects variables within the repeated measures. We're going to see male extroverts. We're going to see female extroverts. We're going to see male introverts. We're going to see female introverts. We're going to have those brought over. So again, we're going to select the levels of our first IV, and bring them over, and then the levels of our second IV and bring them over. So again, notice that I have extroverts and I have introverts. So I selected male and female introvert, click them over, and then I selected male and female extroverts and click them over. Again, we're going to repeat with our second IV. We're then going to click on plots. Within plots, we're simply going to inform it that we want to look at extroversion versus introversion and the interaction. So horizontal and separate lines. And we're going to click add and we're going to click continue. Once we're back here, we're going to click options. And again, we need to tell it what means we want. And we're going to basically select overall and select all of these and bring them over to display means. We're going to ask for descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and a homogeneity test. We're going to click all of those. And again, we're going to click continue at which point we're ready to hit OK and we're going to get our statistical analysis. Now the first thing we're going to get is descriptive statistics, the actual means of our dependent variable for each of our conditions, male extroverts, female extroverts, male introverts, and female extroverts. And again, we're going to get our standard deviations and the n should be the same. This is a repeated measures design. So just eyeballing it, we can see that male and female extroverts were rated fairly highly. There really wasn't much of a visible gender difference at that point. But if we actually look at male versus female introverts, we see that introverts got lower ratings and it's possible that there's a statistical difference where females even got the lowest rating. We're then going to get the means of each of our main effects. We're going to get the mean of introversion versus extroversion. And again, we're going to see a pretty big difference, 3.94 to 3.02. 3 
we're going to see the overall main effect of gender. And we're going to see, again, a bit of a difference favoring men. Men 3.55, women 3.40, but we don't know if that's significant. And finally, we're going to see the interaction. At this point, we're going to see that interaction of introversion, male and female, and extroversion, which mirrors the means that we saw in that first table. We're also going to get our statistical analysis, and there's going to be a lot more information here. But basically, it is the same information that we've been getting in previous analyses. We just have four different options based on whether sphericity was assumed or not. In other words, did our test pass the um, expectation of sphericity? And what we're going to see when we click through here is we're going to see, again, extra versus introversion as our first main effect. So we're going to get our degrees of freedom. We're going to get our mean squares, our f, and our significance, and we're going to get an effect size, partial out of squared. So in this case, there was a main effect, a fairly large one, partial out of squared of 0.38, of extroversion. Extroverts were rated higher. We're also going to get our gender differences. And notice here, it was not significant, p of 0.207. So there was a trend towards a difference, but it wasn't statistically significant. And again, we're going to get our two degrees of freedom. We're going to get our f. We're going to get our significance. And we're going to get our effect size that we'd only report if we had a significant difference. And finally, we're going to get our interaction. In this case, we did not find an interaction. Um, our significance is 0.345. And again, we're going to get all the information we need. So just like a between subjects test, we have a main effect, a main effect and an interaction. However, it's done all internally by the statistical package when we actually ran the repeated measures test.